In Death of Sasquatch Research Part 1, we discuss the inside forces of Sasquatch Research. In Part 2, we discussed outside factions and how they affect Sasquatch Research. Today, in Part 3, we will discuss the part that you, as an individual, might play in the whole scene. Remember, a sign of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. What if we decided to stop doing the same thing over and over? Let's see where that may get us. Our guest today is adverse to the ad hominem, ready to burn down the straw man before it makes an appeal to authority. He protects us from the slippery slope where bandwagons loaded with misinformed make their way as they appeal to ignorance. Of course, it would be a false dilemma to make hasty generalizations about this fellow, but I'll toss in a red herring and appeal to tradition as I introduce Bigfoot Okanagan's Leon Thompson. Let's get it on. This is West Coast Sasquatch Research. In progress. Whoa. Okay, I can edit that out. Yeah. Okay, you know, recently I came across a situation where I had to ask, is skepticism criticism? Just because I don't believe an aspect of somebody's evidence doesn't mean that I do not believe that they are honest, that they are trustworthy, and that they are authentic. They could very well be all of those things. Do we need to learn how to communicate with each other better? or just as importantly, listen to each other. So I got the perfect people with me to mull over this question and see what can be resolved. Bill Reed, how are you doing, Bill? Oh, not too bad. Yourself? Good. And we got the Steenberger. How are you doing, Thomas? I'm doing fine, Jerry. Doing just fine. Wonderful. And Leon, the man, Thompson, from Bigfoot, <laughs> Okanagan, is here with us, too. <laughs> Hey, I welcome you all. I welcome you all. So why does the position of a skeptic usually come across as a negative stance to a misinformed individual? Can they not understand that it is the product of a scientific approach to that person's evidence and it's not a personal attack? Uh, you can jump on that one, Bill, and then I'd like to hear what Leon has to say. Well, I think it's it's a double-edged sword. Part of it is people not understanding what skepticism is from the people that are telling their story or their event. But the other problem is a lot of people that claim to be skeptics are not skeptics. What they are is they are they have a belief system. They do not believe Sasquatch exists, and they're of the opinion prove it to me, and they're not looking at it from a neutral position. So I think both sides, both some of the people claiming to be skeptics and some of those that are, get upset with skeptics don't understand what the role of a skeptic or what skepticism actually means. And I think that's part of the problem. And if you go into places like Bigfoot forums, you can see the terms skeptic and skepticism misused on an everyday occurrence. And I think really what we need to do, people like us that are skeptics, is say what we're doing is we're sitting from a neutral position, examining each piece of evidence neutrally and letting the evidence dictate to us what our conclusion will be. 
not that we have a preconceived notion and we're looking at for confirmational bias. And I think that's the thing is we've got to, under, it's like even the thing with critical thinking or the scientific method that, you know, two more terms that get bandied about so often that people themselves that are using those terms either don't know what it means or they've twisted the meaning to suit their own worldview. Do you agree with that, Leon? <laughs> of course I agree with that. <laughs> oh, well, I see, think, I, go ahead. I, I, was just, I was just curious. Do you, when you asked us that question, do you have it written down? I have many things written down. Well, the reason why is you, you said it this very specific way, and the way you asked the question actually has, in my mind, the answer to your question. Because I don't, I don't, and I probably you can't remember exactly how you word it. So that's okay. That's why the reason why I asked you that. But yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, um, when we're talking to people and discussing people, discussing things to people, the key part that gets confused is we're using the same word, but the person might have a different definition in their head to that, that word. So it's kind of like if we had a whole bunch of different people from different faiths and we got together and we talked about God, well, we're all talking about God, but which God viewpoint are we discussing? So whatever my belief system is about what I think the word's actually meaning, that needs to be um, kind of peaked at first just to make sure that we're actually talking about the same sort of thing. So again, just the word critical thinking, it's got the word critical in it which goes into people's mind as something that is a negative and the same thing as a skeptic, which is usually holding from the general population is you just don't believe anything. That's how skeptical you are. You're so Nancy negative, you know, kind of thing. And that's not what the uh, healthy skeptic is and nor is that what critical thinking is. It's a way of thinking that's very systematic so that when you're looking at stuff, uh, you become, uh, you stay objective in your positioning in other words, inside of your mind and your feelings, you don't have any dog in the, in, the, in the race. So you're just objective at collecting data. Most people, even though they'll say this kind of, well, they, yeah, I'm a skeptic or whatever like that. You talk to them for a little while and you ask them three really good questions, maybe four really good questions. And then whatever the foundation of their belief system is, ends up getting under, uh, starts fracturing for them. And that's when they move from the so-called objective position into the subjective and how you always know when you're in the subjective positioning is you're emotionally starting to react as soon as you start okay, emotionally yeah. reacting you have lost being able to have the capacity to be objective anymore because it's become it moves to what thomas has mentioned many times it's a belief system that you're now agitating in the person it's my belief about what i believe the topic is sasquatch ufos any other crypto any other topic um so yeah, totally. I, I think Bill's dead on on that. I, well, I think all of us think the same way. So, I mean, we all know what we're talking about. What we're saying <laughs> these four, you know, as we're going to be talking about it, we're definitions are all the same. Yeah, because we understand what they are. Leon, for people who don't really know who you are, and it's hard to believe there's people out there who don't know who you are. But uh, could you give a thumbnail background on uh, where you're coming from and? Uh, what brought you into Sasquatch territory? <laughs> Fortunately, what brought me into it, it's the same thing I bumped into. <laughs> so where I, and you know, how and when? <laughs> um, I deal a lot with systems. I educate people about systems, uh, especially your own system, your family okay. system, what you carry and your thinking, why you carry what you carry, what you believe, what you believe. And one day I was just sitting in the office and I thought to myself, I need something to get me out of my head because I needed a break from it. And then all of a sudden Sasquatch came into my brain and I giggled. Well, I didn't giggle, but I actually broke out laughing. I thought, oh, Sasquatch, that's interesting. And uh, so I thought I could study what happens and film the process documented of what happens to someone who comes into the Bigfoot community or scene. And the second thing I could do is objectively look at the Bigfoot community as a system to see how what functions and works and what glitches might be and that was back in almost six years ago I guess when I started that whole process 
And in order to do that, whenever you study a system, I deal with cults too. So in order to go into a cult, you have to drink the Kool-Aid, but you take it kind of like poison of a snake. You take it in low increments so that you understand the belief system that's attached to the narration that's in the system. And so that's what I did. I went online. I thought, got to be objective about it. If I was looking for a Sasquatch. Where would I go? I go online. I hear what they say uh, as evidence for Sasquatch. I look for all those things. I videotape the whole thing. I allow myself to be gullible. Uh, and so that gullibility comes through in my original videos, which have, I pulled off. I got about 30 of them. I'm going to use them as kind of a systematic documentary of what happens to people when they come into the system and the priming of the brain. And uh, then what I found out uh, uh, was there's something really bad. As soon as you can ask any question, there's no sacred cows like we would be doing normally if we were all sitting around. A closed system is you can ask certain questions, but you don't ask those questions. And that's where it becomes very subjective in regards to the belief system uh, or the belief of the, uh, of the system. So uh, probably about year three, I re- started to really tune into what I think I was walking into. I uh, reached out online, found this guy named Thomas Steenberg by seeing him in a few videos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Realized he was by mission. And I was all excited because he was going to help me figure out whether or not the mission uh, Sasquatch sighting was legit. And because I was all keen to go and I already checked it out online and, you know, uh, looked it up on Google Maps. And so I made uh, reached out to Thomas and uh, we got together and within five seconds, he basically (laughs) told me what the backstory was. And my heart sunk down <laughs> into the bowels of my bowels, uh, which was good because a year and a half later, I got to talk to Justin from Mountain Beast Mysteries and he was all keen to go. And I put my hand on his shoulder and I said to him what Thomas had told me and he did the same thing. <laughs> his heart went from up to excitement to no. Yes. So that Thomas is good at disappointing frustrated. people. Well, in a good way, I think. <laughs> in a and good when way. he said to me, Talk you know, <laughs> he's awake, yeah. he's awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not frozen. Uh, so when Thomas uh, said to me, and I mean, he's told, I think he's pretty well nailed it is the inmates have taken over the asylum. Now, uh, you could just hear anyone who's listening to us right now that's just getting online is really keen and been drinking the Kool-Aid that they're going to be pissed right off at us to say such a thing. You know, they're going to react to this whole, um, well, how dare you? And what do you mean the inmates? What are you calling us crazy? No, we're calling you lack of education. And that's what we're actually here for is to educate ourselves about upping the game so that uh, we could uh, track these things down and instead of just listening to priming of the narrative of people with videos that we watch on a screen because we're excited and we have an open regulator because we're trusting um people need to ask people if you're watching or you follow anybody on a channel especially if they have high viewer subscribers that it's not a sign you know what they're talking about at all the brain likes patterns it sees a high number it Mm -hmm. gives validity so you think that this has got some kind of credibility to it So what you do at the end of videos is, especially if you've got a keen person you follow all the time, is ask this one question. Did this person show me at all why whatever he's showing me is evidence is it is a Sasquatch from his inside out? Or all you're seeing is a finger pointing and a declaration that Sasquatch is a Sasquatch, structures are Sasquatch, uh, tree snaps are Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. You need to slow them down and Ask them with buttercup, a fairy, and fudge cakes, and anything else you can in a nice tone. Can you please just explain to me how you see that? That or can you explain to me why you think that's a Sasquatch from the inside out? And they won't have that data. That's wisdom. Mm-hmm. And it's like when it comes to tracks. A lot of people say they. I don't know how many tracks I've seen where people have sent them, and they're not. They're not Sasquatch tracks. But we're looking for tracks and they're in a straight line. Well, yeah, well, that's nice. Do you know how to recognize a track? Do you know what, the, what you're looking for when looking at a track? And what you're looking for is not just the pattern of the track. You're looking for energy distribution of the force of a pad or hoof or whatever going into another solid 
material or liquid or muck or whatever like that, because that force will be different. You'll see a living energy in the track. And that was kind of a nice deep way of explaining how to view a track. But many people don't look at it that way. They just see a track and it's double bear paw, double bear print or Sasquatch boots, well, tracks I'll, I'll, and stuff. Uh, I don't know how to edit uh, or how to uh, figure out what's going on. Okay, got Leon, it. I got this. I got this uh, name that you sent out, and uh, no, it wasn't you. It was somebody else. Uh, common oh, logical it, fallacies. Number that was six. Me. That was you. Yeah. I'm no scientist. I'm no more a scientist than my dog is a cat. I'm an empty vessel. Fill me up, man. Number six. Appeal to ignorance. This is the only one that set me back. When it is said that an argument must be true if it cannot be proven false or false if it cannot be proven true. Now, I thought to myself, hang on, because I figured I, was, I, I, I had something, uh, some sort of understanding on how theory and uh, experimentation and getting your evidence together and whatnot works. So I thought, how could I apply that? And so it came down to this. Schmuck number one and schmuck number two go into a bar, sit down, have a beer. Schmuck number one says, I believe that Sasquatch bury their dead. Schmuck number two says, I believe that Sasquatch do not bury their dead. To me, one of these statements can be made provable, but one cannot. And... Am I right or am I wrong? What do you think? Or does this fall into appeal to ignorance? I will tell you why, if you wish, that I think one could be. Uh, can, I, can I break you in there for a sec, Jerry? Sure. I, I think, I think there's, there's, there's two real close arguments that get used quite a bit, is the appeal to ignorance and it's often coupled with appeal to authority. Like you'll often hear okay. somebody mm -hmm. say, I know because, and then try to show you that they have some authority on the subject and then go into the, to the appeal to ignorance. And this is an old ploy. If you look, and I've said it before, you know, because you know, this stuff all goes back to, you know, the philosophers of, of ancient Greece when they came up with a lot of, with a critical thinking, or at least our Western version of it. But if you go back to the 60s, Eric von Danken, when he wrote his books, you know, Chariots of the Gods, Gold mm -hmm. of the Gods, he was king of it. Yep. He would always end a sentence with, and science cannot explain it. So as soon as he used that phrase, and science cannot explain it, he's leading you down the garden path of whichever crazy theory he thinks it happens to be. And you see that in the Sasquatch world. And you also get, with that, guys that claim, oh, I've been researching for 40 years, and I've had a habitation site for the last 20, and this is what I've seen. And they're now telling you that they have a level of knowledge or expertise that you don't have, and then they go into to their argument. So I think when you're looking at especially when you're looking at, you know, critical thinking, you can get multiple different types of those arguments wound up into the same conversation, off, often used to bolster one another. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I, I, but I, 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 I still wonder that, uh, as, as I said, I thought one of these statements could be made provable because... Uh, you could apply evidence to it. Let's say, let's say well, you, can't, you can't prove it until you do the first step, which is prove Sasquatch exists. Well, <laughs> or find a or find a grave. Well, if you're going to you play that grave, card, let's say, shut up go. shop right now. And <laughs> but no, but that's what you're saying when some, when you're going to prove something like that. Anything when people's making a statement about Sasquatch, you cannot prove or disprove until we've answered the first question. So any discussion we're gonna have would be hypothetical at best. Until question one is answered, every other question is a moot point. 
hundred percent. I'm just pointing at my, just popping up my other laptop here. So, which I had done. Uh, that's because <laughs> <laughs> you see me puppeting. I'm puppeting over here a lot, like doing this kind you of are, stuff. You're you're weaving just, and dodging, <laughs> and you know, I was waiting for this uh, glove that's been pumped in the side of the head or something. Yeah. yeah. So, so Thomas, according to that, tell me, is there any purpose for an entity like Sasquatch World? No. I mean, if, if, the, if the question is number one and it hasn't been answered, what the hell are we all doing here? Trying to answer question number one. <laughs> as, I, as I said to you before, answer question number one is like trying to find a smoking gun. We can't even find a gun, let alone if it's smoking. Wait, whoa, slow <laughs> down. This is where it goes back to what we were talking about before in regards to make sure we're talking the same thing. When you're talking about the number one thing, we found the number one thing, in my opinion, that's tracks. Everything above that is speculation. That's what I call got. Every, everything above tracks is air. And it yeah. is, that's all you got is fistfuls right. of air. Tracks right. are the right. only thing in this world right. that could so possibly... Means, even, even tracks are a question mark. Because after all, if the Sasquatch does not and never did exist, there has to be a different explanation for them. But it doesn't matter. The tracks are all that's important. And all we're doing now is trying to figure out what makes those tracks. The rest is just fairy tale stories and everything else. No faith in it whatsoever. But something is making those tracks. There's still a $100,000 reward for anyone who can prove how these tracks are made that nobody has ever claimed. So that is what got me curious and is still what makes me curious is how the hell and why are these tracks in existence? I mean, it's not just someone playing a prank on someone when you find these tracks, as some of us have many miles up into the woods underneath a bush, you know, like what the hell? Just stepping back a bit, Jerry, it doesn't matter. And, and again, we haven't filmed the Sasquatch, sure. but there has been numerous species where evidence of presence had led to their discovery. And that's what we do in the research. That goes beyond tracks. As, and this is where, where we try to differentiate between evidence of existence and fairy tales and, and other things. And we can only do so much. But if you're when you look at tracks, tracks, what is often not thought of with tracks is tracks are a great method of disproving. And when I say that, Leon did the perfect example with the best Sasquatch tracks of 2020. There was a story that there was a track. <laughs> Leon went there. It's a whole new podcast. Analyzed it and had conclusive proof through his, you know, how he analyzed it, that it was a moose track. So, and this is where the, where, where evidence, there's certain eyewitness accounts that we can say that person is credible and we have no reason to disbelieve them. If a Sasquatch exists, they saw it. So from that, even though it's that evidence is hearsay, we can try to develop patterns. We can try to develop other criteria to aid us in our search for the existence of Sasquatch. The problem that we have as researchers is reading the signal from all the noise. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet you if we took even though the four of us have a very similar view on Sasquatch, I'll bet you if you were to deep down analyze each of our own criteria for analyzing evidence, we would all probably have slightly different approaches and slight, and even slightly different because of our worldview, because each of our own, our own worldview is individual, we will have certain prejudice in how we review evidence, no matter how hard we try to be 100% neutral. 
Well, yeah, I think I'm, at the end of the day, as researchers, we're trying to take the wheat from the chaff. Well, the, but it always goes back to you're trying to prove yourself wrong. Yeah, really, <laughs> you're literally trying to prove yourself wrong. You're not just saying what I just said. Well, you know, you're going up there trying to prove yourself wrong. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the viewer that. But the bottom line is you are. And, you know, th that was why it was so hopeful for when you're hearing a clickbait from being, well, you know, the, you know, the person mm -hmm. talking about where it's saying the best Sasquatch trackways of 2020. Now, listen, uh, when Thomas came across what sold him was when he came across those tracks. I uh, can't remember, Thomas, where you said they were at. Baldwin Creek, 1986. Right, right. And then you, and imagine finding that type of trackway, but in snow. Because that type of trackway in snow is going to give you tons of environmental data that we would need about Sasquatch. Because we can easily track, or I won't say easily, uh, have a higher capacity to track those, or follow those trackways so we can find out where it bedded, why it bedded there. Uh, lots of data we could have collected from that environment. But we haven't even done that yet. <laughs> you know, we just really need one really good snow trackway that's, uh, you know, yeah, that we that we could track because you, and even if they're covered in snow, as long as it's not too much snow, and you can still see the indents. Man, we could follow them for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. Now that ain't gonna get tell us any more about what Sasquatches look like or how they behave. Well, in a way, it'll tell us the behavior, but it, it, we're still gonna be emptied. You know, I see if I see a I don't know a wolf hanging around my property here. Or I got a sow bear with two cubs roaming around. Well, great. I can follow its tracks and stuff, but it, it doesn't put me in the mind of a, a bear. I have to do more research of understanding of uh, bear behavior. So uh, to me, that's the thing that's so bloody frustrating is this chronic, as Thomas had mentioned in the past too, is Matt, you don't understand every year, more dump trucks. <laughs> so, <you're, laughs> you know, Bill, that's what you're talking about is you know and, and then it's recirculated regurgitated dump trucks from 20 years ago or 15 years ago mm -hmm. you know and you're like oh my god i mean i i, I it, it's such a waste of, of energy time and anybody who's trying to do anything because online scene unfortunately is so saturated that like you said uh i was teaching the class the other uh, one of the classes the other day and i said to everybody uh you guys remember how i was on or asked to be on global national news and yeah i said yeah and I said, so let me do a scenario here. So so-and-so over here, he can make a declaration that, hey, Leon, you know, I'm not going to believe what happened to me this weekend. I saw a Sasquatch uh, come through a portal. Uh, aliens came down. Two of them caught out, came over and talked to him. <laughs> and then he ended up cloaking and then uh, went into the bush. Now, that's one statement. So I said to the class, that's one statement that he said. And he is, and it's going to take me 10 times the amount of energy for each of those three things, portal, UFOs, and Sasquatch. And uh, you, know, you throw mind speak any other thing you want in there, but it's going to take me 10 times the amount of energy to come up with a narration for a person to educate them of why those things are wrong if they bought into that belief system. Well, exactly. I was talking to Nikki the other day and uh we were talking about evidence and not believing evidence. And um, I said, uh, but you know, the thing is, Nikki, is that for every ounce of misinformation or bad evidence, it takes 15 pounds worth of effort to try <laughs> to make up for it. 15 pounds of effort for every ounce of bullshit that's out there. And she agreed with me. And, um, uh, you know, what, the, what steps can be done to turn Sasquatch world around to make it uh, worthy of some serious gravitas for, you know, in the eyes of the public or even in the eyes of uh, the scientists? Well, what, what, do you, what do you think has to be done to say, okay, you know, whoa, horsey, time to turn you around and head back the trail the other way kind of thing? I think it's gone beyond that, quite frankly. And the general public, the uh, inmates running the asylum are basically dug in and they're entrenched and uh, their system of nonsense is just unable to be overcome by common sense research because too many people are invested in that nonsense. And, you know, and to go beyond that, I'll use an example that Thomas and I had a couple years ago. On one of Thomas's videos, a young guy commented 
he first off he started off that he was couldn't believe that Thomas was such a moron for being in us for 40 years without finding any Sasquatch evidence because he was a city boy, didn't know anything about the woods, but using Google Earth, the first four times he went out looking for Sasquatch, three of those times he was able to find evidence of Sasquatch. And he was talking about stick structures and other nonsense. Mm. And then when we asked him, well, if you're somebody that has no, you're a city boy and you've claimed that you have absolutely zero bushcraft, how are you confident being out there? And he said, well, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos, so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, at, at that yeah, point, I don't know course. if Thomas remembers that, but at that point in time, we basically just disengaged with that person because, again, you know, we – we can try to talk to somebody when they first bring something forward, but there has to be a level level of reasonableness there. Yep. And if you're talking to somebody that is already an expert in everything, then you're wasting your time. And your best bet is to just disengage and put your efforts where they belong. I mean, again, we talked about it before, you know, somebody's come after a friend of yours, uh, such as, you know, the Bluff Creek Massacre, and you want to, you know, spend your energy defending people like John Green. I mean, that's mm -hmm. all well and good. You're doing it for a personal reason. But when you get so many charlatans out there, if we tried going to every page or try to, to educate every person that was out there, they're not willing to listen. So, you're going to waste your time. You have to focus your energy on the people that are willing to listen and willing to learn. It's the same. And the same with us. We have to be willing to listen and willing it's to learn. what Bill just said there, Gary. Uh, um, Todd Standing. I've had so many people tell me, do you have proof that Todd Standing faked this? Or do you have proof mm -hmm. that Todd said it? I'm just disengaged. I said, I got better things to do than follow Todd standing around. You know, uh, no. <laughs> but so I, I just disengage and go back to my own inquiries and research, and, uh, and, th and that's it. I mean, even I, with Tom, I'm not going to waste all my energy trying to disprove something I know is absolute horseshit. And if they want to believe it, go ahead. I mean, if you want to continue chasing your tails, go ahead. And there's just so many people in this nowadays that love that never-ending merry-go-round. Go ahead. Go with that, Thomas. Yeah. With Todd Stanley, you know, somebody says, Todd Stanley, well, you can direct them to those two people that – did the excellent study on the pictures to show that it was Todd standing in a mask. They did the excellent on how that blinking is not a mammalian blink. It has to be animatronic. So you can, for somebody that says, well, you, can you prove, you can say, well, here's evidence that shows that those are animatronics and not real. If they choose to agree with it, that's fine. But there, you know, there are people out there that in some cases have put out evidence, like with Bluff Creek, when all that nonsense with the Bluff Creek massacre came out, you and Bill Miller invested the effort to show why that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. But just like other people have done that with Todd Standing. I mean, yeah, yeah. Know, and some people agree with us, and but there's a hell of a lot of people that don't. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So that's well, a pretty, that, that's a pretty bleak picture you guys have painted. I must admit, for the for the newcomer, <laughs> for this this these podcasts are basically aimed towards the newcomers. And well, thank, I, feel, and, I feel so sorry for the newcomer now. I feel absolute nothing but sympathy for a newcomer now who wants to get seriously involved in something like this because there is so much garbage just dumped on your head. <laughs> it just got a short. Like Leon said, what I've said before about dump trucks, you they literally line another crowd and 14 dump trucks dump all this stuff in your head. And you've got to try to sift through all this nonsense. Uh, uh, I, I personally, personally, if I were to come into this research today, 
I'd probably just go around the back and blow my own brains out. But, you know, building on that, Thomas, I think Leon, and I might be misquoting you here, Leon, so if I am, please correct me. But you've mentioned on some other podcasts I've seen where you've talked about a lot of the younger people. And I think you're right in that most of the younger people are more discerning when it comes to this sort of stuff than the older generation like us. I agree. They've, they've grown up yep. with the internet and they've grown up with, with the silliness that's out there. And I think that's what we can do is we can appeal to the discerning newcomers. And, and, and I think again, Leon, you said we have to have, hit a high standard. And when we tell them, something don't say i am telling you this because i've done this for 40 years give them valid reasons on why you believe your evidence is correct valid reasons on why you come up with the theory that you have and if they provide feedback by knocking down your argument and saying hey this you know have you thought about this if they've put a well-reasoned argument into you well, you owe it to them. If, you, if you're a true researcher, you owe it to them to consider it. And if they're right, or you believe they're right, move forward with that. And if you don't believe they're right, get into a healthy dialogue. Mm-hmm. But I, I think us old guys, you know, we may have more of an issue with the internet, but I think a lot of the younger people are way more savvy and have a, a higher BS filter than we give them credit for. That's kind of true. I have done that in the past and review this, review that. And, uh, I have problems finding it myself sometimes, even my own database, <laughs> but they find it right away. <laughs> I've had some people come up, geez, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. You, and, and it does work, but you're never going to convince everybody. You're never, ever, ever going to convince everybody. Yeah. You know, in, in this, in this uh, Sasquatch enthusiast business, it's uh, the best thing about this I've found is that when you hit your 60s, you have no peers. So there's nobody that can impress you about anything. You can give the finger to all of them, you know. But for the newcomers, uh, that's what these podcasts are all about, the newcomers, the research. Uh, to them, is it legitimate uh, to worry about friends and family, what they think of you because you're involved in this, you know? If you, if you uh, were convinced that Sasquatch is real and you went around telling people this, would they now, you know, look at you as kind of gullible and, you know, you're not the serious person I thought you were to fall for this line of bull, you know? Do you think that's something that uh, many younger researchers might trip across? Well, there's a thing called the 1840-60 rule. 18, you're worried about everything. At 18, you're worried about what everyone thinks of you. At 40, you don't give a shit what anyone's thinking about you. At 60, you realize no one's even thinking about you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so sad, so, but so true. Yeah. And I mean, part yeah. of the idea about when I got online to do this whole thing was to document what actually happens when somebody comes into a system like this. Because yeah. my channel, and you'll see it over and over again, is, is for the beginners. Yep. Um, I, 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 I have. Um, That's why I of, had to get you on this <laughs> cause podcast. I, I, I had an interesting thing just happen to me two days ago. And that was somebody on a Facebook page had posted my video called uh, This is Disappointing Sasquatch Videos We Once Thought Were Real Turned Out to Be mm-hmm. Not What We Thought They Were or something like that. So, anyways, he put it on there. He was an administrator for the facebook page and uh he said this is a great video you guys should check it out all this kind of stuff and then uh there was a couple of one guy who was also an administrator for that channel he says well that was a waste of my 15 minutes and then he proceeded to do this whole novel of about you know if you don't believe in sasquatch why do this kind of stuff you're just promoting the hoaxers and all that like and, and they went on and went on now i know this guy really well and i really respect this guy and i was testing the waters because like Sometimes, and you guys have been online where people have left you stuff where you just want to say something and slice, dice, and Julian Fry, the person who has no <laughs> idea what they're doing, right? And they're projecting onto you all these other people that they've come across and they, for some reason, think that they hear the same words 
but they don't realize that who's now they're watching is coming at it from a totally different angle, but they can't recognize that. So, so what ended up happening is that we went, I, I, I read it at 11 o'clock at night when I was just done a shift. So I was driving 45 minutes home and my mind just kept ruminating over how I should respond to this. And uh, I thought, uh, how did I word it? I said something like, um, uh, have you ever had this style of occupation or whatever? And the guy who had originally posted said, Leon, you know, he has. And uh, I said, uh, and I, and then, so he comes back with this long statement again. And I said to him, instead of talking about what he was, where he was at, cause he was again, subjective. I could tell by the tone and the writing that was in there. And, and I said to him, could you tell me so-and-so what you believe my motivation was for doing that video? And he says, uh, well, Leon, I don't know what your motivation is. Well, apparently he must because he wouldn't have wrote a novel of all the ideas of what his perception was about what this video was about when it wasn't about that at all. So I thought about it for another 12 hours. And, I, and then the second thing I wrote back to him was, um, <laughs> was I think a lot of times so-and-so people forget that my channels are for the beginners and the reason why i did that video was because some of those videos were circulated and have been circulated for over 10 years and i don't want my viewers if they're new to come on they'll see my video and they'll say oh uh that's what the video leon was talking about and it's all vetted this kind of stuff uh the the second administrator came back said leon fair enough i had a burr under my butt because I thought you were coming from another approach. I'm so sorry I did that for you. I still think you're an incredible researcher. I don't like using the word researcher. <laughs> we're looking for truth. Get word researcher yeah. out of your mouth. Put the yeah. word truth there. That helps yeah. with the conversations you're having with people. And um, and then I had a second guy apply or respond. Again, this is all bullshit. This guy's a liar and a charlatan. The administration automatically jumps on and says, you don't even know this guy. Who are you to say this about this guy? How do you know that this guy's a liar and shirt? I can guarantee you that Leon is not blah, 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 blah. So this guy comes in with a whole, again, narration novel. He's got it written down about all of the stuff. And again, it's the same thing that was regurgitated a little bit up top, which was about, you know, hoaxers and all this kind of stuff. And this doesn't do anything for the community and all that. And then I said, well, let's test your, let's test your, your own character uh, to see and your capability in those videos there's one video of an eagle cam from one of the states and below it supposed what sasquatch walk through go research that video and find out what the name of the guy that's actually in that video and then i said it is a person so he comes back and he says well i'm from wisconsin and i've been living here for 50 years my uh, this is kind of important to hear this for people who are listening and watching uh, and I've been in this area for 50 years and my grandmother found an 18 foot track. Now this is what's called deflection mm -hmm. <laughs> because he's not doing what I asked him to do. And uh, I said, well, and once you've done that video, go and do all the other videos. And I would hope that you'd have the character to come back and do an apology because if you don't do that, then the, then those two definitions, liar and uh, uh, charlatan are going to be applying to you because you accused me. You said to me, I was a liar which makes you a liar if, if you're wrong and you're a charlatan if you don't do what I asked you to do. So, uh, so he comes back with this whole long thing again. So my next response to him is going to be, you know, it's incredible. If you've been in that area in Wisconsin for 50 years, this is where the, the, the state camps at. Surely you should be able to find it faster than I, I would find it. Do you think, and he's totally missing, and this is what you're looking for. Like when I study systems and I'm looking at that dialogue of that narration, the guy's thought process, how he's negotiating it. He doesn't want to do what the main problem in the Bigfoot community is. Investigate. Don't make an accusation about somebody you don't know and call him a liar and a charlatan. Go and check to see whether or not, first of all, the guy's even telling the truth about it. You have to do that. But again, mm -hmm. that's at 10 times the amount of effort it's going to take him to do it. He wouldn't even do it for the most easiest one in his own state. And, and he's still, you know, going on about, like you were saying, Bill, you know, I've been doing this for 50 years and blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking, yeah, you remind me of a guy I had working for me. He was doing it for 10 years. The same mistakes. He's just been doing them for 10 years. I had a guy, years. I had a guy on Bigfoot forums that pulled that one on me. And he said, I don't know if you get out in the woods at all, but I get out in the woods 
five times a day for at least four hours a day. <laughs> nice <laughs> end, Bill. <laughs> totally. I thought he was supposed to have the last word, not you. <laughs> I got That's the good. last word. Good night, guys. Thank you very much.